Joining us this week marks the end of the Trump era border policy known as Title 42 that allowed border officials to turn away many people seeking asylum in the U.S. on the basis of public health. Now some Republican senators are demanding immediate action at the border. KMAX Basil John has more. It's a landmark change in immigration policy as officials brace for a potential surge at the border. Why is President Biden not here? With the expiration of Title 42, Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz is concerned about what will happen to migrants at the border. We're witnessing modern day slavery and maddeningly what the Biden administration has decided is they want more. Cruz says there are a number of migrants dying at the border, as well as women and children being assaulted. He wants to see change from the administration before it's too late. We are clear-eyed about the challenges we are likely to face in the days and weeks ahead. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas expects large numbers of encounters at the border, but they are prepared. We prepared for this moment for almost two years and our plan will deliver results. Mayorkas says migrants have to apply for asylum in countries they cross. DHS will also send more workers to help with processing and set up more processing centers south of the border. We are extending an out, outstretched arm of humanitarian relief to reach people where they are. House Republicans passed the GOP Border Security Act, which would resume construction of the border wall and hire more border patrol agents. We took action to protect every community in America that is now a border town. But House Democrats see this bill as a waste and doesn't help the issue at hand. Another week, another extreme MAGA Republican piece of legislation that the Republican majority is trying to jam down the throats of the American people. The bill passed mostly along party lines with two Republicans voting against it, and it is expected to fail in the Senate. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. Well, joining us today is Cynthia Quintanilla. Thank you so much for being with us today, Executive Director of Catholic Charities of Lubbock. And I wanted to talk to you specifically this week because Title 42 expiring means a lot of things to a lot of people. But I want to know what it means here in Lubbock because we're not down at the border. But you are in the trenches, or your organization is, rather, every single day talking with people trying to get citizenship, permanent residence, all of that. So. What does something like this mean for us here? Well, we are, like you said, not anywhere near the border. So we're a little bit isolated to uh, this situation that's happening at the border. Um, refugees who are coming from other countries, Title 42 has kind of uh, shut the doors uh, to that access. And so, you know, once they enter into the country, Many of them are going to go to other states yeah. and um, connect with relatives and be able to to make those uh, family connections uh, once they are admitted. Mm -hmm. um, but for here at Catholic Charities, um, we here in Lubbock, we do um, have an immigration program mm -hmm. that basically helps uh, clients who are trying to become legal permanent residents or citizenships and or get their citizenship so you know a lot of that process takes years of yeah. you know applying and waiting and so you know that's that's really um most of the work that we do here and and you know we're kind of isolated from what's going on at the border yeah. um, but at the same time you know a lot of the people if they do happen to pass through mm -hmm. this area you know hopefully we're able to step in and provide some compassionate care so maybe that's food or clothing or yeah. things like that if they're just by chance passing through definitely and I mean I know there's such an influx of people at the border so you know, who knows where everyone's going to end up or where everyone's going to need to stay for a little bit while things get situated. I know that Catholic Charities down in El Paso or Brownsville, like those places, they are, I mean, just up to their eyeballs in so many different kinds of crises right now. Is that something y'all are aware of? I mean, do you send resources there or is this something that, that you're just kind of waiting for now? Yeah, at this point, we're just waiting to see um, what kind of effect that's gonna have. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, those places that are along the border, you know, they've been kind of preparing for this. Sure. So, you know, there's been a lot of conversation about, you know, how do we, how do we handle this influx? And, mm -hmm. and hopefully, you know, some of that is gonna be 
shared among the community um, as they try to, to get everybody to where they're going. So, yeah. um, but if the need does arise, you know, hopefully they'll reach out and they'll let us know how we can help. Yeah, kind of a network mm -hmm. situation. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about, I mean, there's, there's a lot of new rules now. Um, I, Basically everything changes when it comes to citizenship because there were so many uh, barriers put up because of the pandemic. So let's talk a little bit about citizenship, getting it, because that's not just a stand in one line, get a sticker, hey, congratulations. I mean, this is a long process. So what does that look like for someone here? I mean, it's not easy. No, no, and there are a lot of uh, requirements that go behind that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of the, the people who we help have to actually qualify uh, to apply for either legal permanent residency or citizenship. Mm -hmm. I don't have all the, all the details to that, sure. and our caseworkers do a, a really magnificent job of, of being, you know, straightforward and honest with folks when they come, and, yeah. and they're interested in doing that. So really um, looking at the history and where they've been and, and how they've, they came and entered into the United States has a lot to do with whether or not they actually qualify. And you know that is so much different than what's going on at the border because the people who are at the border are refugees and they're people who um, are trying to flee their country um, for whatever purpose and trying to just you know gain access to a better life. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's a great difference to make because, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is a different story down yes. there. So we're sitting as Texans watching this, and, you know, this affects more than just us here in the Lone Star State, but we know that Texas is, it's, this is happening in our state. Do you know of any way that, that we can help? What can someone sitting on their couch do for someone who's trying to seek asylum or help the situation? Is there anything that we can do? I think um, just kind of be prepared um, to, you know, offer any kind of assistance. Like it could yeah. be a meal for somebody who's, yeah. like I said, just passing through or, you know, finding a way to maybe support some of the organizations on the border who are doing the work and providing a place to shower and, yeah. you know, hygiene products and clothing and things like that. So, you know, just lending that helping hand uh, could be a big difference to a family who has been waiting for so long just to enter. Yeah, and not even the close to the end of the road for them right. either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to explain some of this today for us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>